Huawei recently unveiled its Mate 60 Pro smartphone, causing an immediate stir in the Chinese media, We claims that Huawei has fearlessly struck off US restrictions to reclaim its position at the pinnacle of the 5G mobile industry. However, the initial excitement swiftly dissipated. A program on CCTV on September 6 pointed out that the smartphone utilizes a 7 nanometer Kirin chipset, which significantly lags behind the technology adopted by other contemporary brands. Industry experts who dismantled the phone for evaluation revealed that the Mate 60 Pro features a 7 nanometer chipset comparable to the capabilities of the American Qualcomm 865 chipset or the performance level of Apple's flagship devices from 2019 falling short of Huawei's own 2020 Mate 40 model, which was designed with a 5 nanometer chipset manufactured by TSMC. So, what is the real-world performance for this chipset when used in current smartphones? Here are some first-hand user experience sharing. Yang Ruling, the Director of Research at Taiwan's Industrial Technology Research Institute Industry, Science and Technology International Strategy Development Department, recounted a friend's experience with the new Huawei phone. The phone overheated after being used for a day. Given the size of the heat dissipation plate, it's unpredictable when it might crash. Online discussions have also emerged, urging people to avoid purchasing the device. One post shared a story of a colleague, a devoted Huawei fan who spent 7,999 yuan, that is around 1,100 US dollars, on the newly released Huawei Mate 60 Pro and was initially ecstatic and was boasting to me about it in the morning. But by the afternoon, he called and said that there is something wrong and he was having issues with noise during the calls. In online forums, when queried about choosing between the Huawei Mate 60 Pro and the Apple 14 Pro, one netizen replied, Unless one is blindly loyal, the choice should clearly be the Apple 14 Pro as the two products practically belong to different eras. Recently, many influencers who previously refrained from commenting have begun to vocalize their opinions tactfully, noting that the new Huawei release only meets the standard of a product from two years ago. Many online comments said that it is so funny they're praising the phone's system speed, likening to the commending a car for having four good wheels, ensuring it won't topple over. Official promotions claim a 30-minute full charge. The device actually takes 48 minutes. Among the reasons cited for not purchasing the phone were Huawei's reliance on patriotic marketing while using a 7nm chipset and reports of noise during charging, an aspect many find intolerable, Criticism also mentioned the phone's boasted ability to function at negative 30 degrees Celsius, a feature seen as redundant. The Wall Street Journal highlighted that despite the phone's chipset being manufactured with technology comparable to 7 nanometer processors, it still trails far behind market leaders. The Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, for instance, has already commenced mass production of more advanced 3 nanometer chipsets while the Chinese technology has practically maxed out at 5 nanometers. TSMC has already mapped out developments down to 1 nanometer processors. It was noted that the Chinese populace is astute and regardless of the media's promotion of Huawei, many are adopting a wait and see approach. Let's take a look at the subsidies for Huawei's chips. According to rumors, the chips utilized in these smartphones are produced by Chinese company SMIC, employing a 14 nanometer process and achieving performance equivalent to 7 nanometers through multiple exposure technology. However, this method significantly escalates the production cost. If the standard chipset production cost is 1,000 yuan, this process could potentially raise a cost to 7,000 yuan. Reports indicate that Huawei has increased the shipment volume for the Mate 60 series to 20 million units. Should the government subsidize this, the figures would be colossal, possibly amounting to 120 billion yuan. Moreover, the surveillance features of Huawei phones have been a focal point, with concerns regarding safety and privacy protection to the extent that some suspects these devices can be used as monitoring devices. Notably, Huawei phones cannot install VPN and other bypass software, ostensibly saving the Chinese Communist Party a significant amount in stability maintenance expenses. 
It has also been discovered that there are attempts to sidestep U.S. restrictions in the development of Huawei Mate 60. The most expensive foreign component in this mobile are the DRAM and NAND flash from South Korea SK Hinks. Interestingly, in numerous teardown videos, the markings on the packaging of these memory components were found to be wiped off, raising red flags. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, Regulations, any supply using American technology to supply companies listed on the entity list, including Huawei, must secure approval beforehand. This indicates that if these memory components were used in 5G phones, it would be unauthorized, perhaps explaining why the Huawei Mate was never advertised as a 5G phone. It's reasonable to speculate that SK Hinks export documents to the U.S. Department of Commerce, it might have indicated that these memory components were for 4G phones. Consequently, Huawei might be deliberately blur the lines between 4G and 5G classifications and have obscured the memory markings to sidestep U.S. export restrictions. If Huawei were explicitly display a 5G signal on the phones, this could serve as strong evidence of deception during the export application process. The teardown also revealed that the Kirin 9000's chip used in the Mate 60 Pro differs from the chips manufactured by TSMC three years ago. Hu Xingjing, the former chief editor of Global Times, disclosed that according to internal sources, the Mate 60 Pro utilizes domestically produced chips, though some key elements in the production chain remain undisclosed. At present, industry insiders have revealed the origins of other chips in the smartphone, Qingdao CN supplies Huawei phones with power microcontroller chips, ensuring regular power supply and operation execution. Jinghua and Sui Shaw produce and provide the necessary drum chips for Huawei. PXW Semiconductor Manufacturing, a company closely aligned with Huawei, primarily manufactures image sensors and RF chips. Shenzhen Proton Sensing Technology, PST, supplies critical logic chips for Huawei. These firms are all state-owned enterprises established in various regions, maintaining close ties with Huawei. PXW, a state-owned enterprise under the Shenzhen Municipal Government, was established in June 2021 and is situated just a stone's throw away from Huawei's headquarters. In just over a year, PXW has constructed a brand new factory and commenced deliveries in the first half of 2023. Although its chip manufacturing capabilities are not on par with TSMC, its products are already sufficient to propel Huawei back to a leading position in the smartphone and services sector. In a report from October 2022, Bloomberg noted that PXW was aiding Huawei in circumventing U.S. sanctions, secretly placing orders for chips and other necessary equipment from foreign suppliers. In Taiwan, PXW has launched a massive recruitment drive, offering an annual salary of 5 million new Taiwan dollars for individuals with a master's degree and two years of work experience. That is almost 157,000 US dollars. Moreover, managers with over 10 years of experience are being enticed with salaries exceeding 10 million new Taiwanese dollars, a staggering sum. According to Chinese universities and recruitment websites, there are numerous job advertisements from PXW. Furthermore, it's worth noting that PXW's founder, Zhou Jing, shares a name with a former deputy CEO of Huawei. How were these companies established? Since 2021, to evade US sanctions, the Shenzhen major industry investment group emerged, welding tens of billions in state funds and focusing on investment in the semiconductor industry. Similar industry investment entities have been established in Beijing and Shanghai. The Shenzhen Major Industry Investment Group funded SMIC Shenzhen's 12-inch 28nm chip manufacturing project. Through mergers and acquisitions, the group has also accelerated the upgrading of FCM Microelectronics, aspiring to transform it into a leader in the third-generation semiconductor chip manufacturing sector, paralleling TSMC in China, in addition, the group has invested in Huawei's fully operated Haibao Venture Investment, a privately held fund. Utilizing these funds, Haibao has undertaken a series of investments, primarily introducing advanced technology from the US in the EDA sector to enhance its chip design capabilities. One of its investment, Arakas Microelectronics, the designer of the Kirin 9000 chip was founded by a PhD who returned from the US other invested EDA firms include 9Cube 
Microelectronics, Flytrom Electronics, and Li Xing Software, among others. Since being blacklisted by the US, Huawei through Harbaugh Ventures has strategically invested in at least 25 Chinese tech firms, 20 of which are related to the semiconductor industry. These include Rupin Semiconductor in Shenzhen and Xi'an Integrated Circuits, a chip manufacturer established in 2018. The founder of China Resources Micro, Mr. Li Hong, a U.S. national with a Ph.D. degree, serves as a company's chairman and president. This marks another notable returnee from the United States. In terms of satellite connection, Huawei's Mate 60 has touted its satellite phone feature, a functionality that indeed surpasses the iPhone 14, which can only send text messages. However, the satellite phone feature of the Huawei Mate 60 is limited to connecting through China Telecom Network, exclusively utilizing China's Tiantong One satellite. Users of other telecom operators will be unable to enjoy the satellite phone services even after purchasing this new Huawei device. Located at an altitude of 35,000 kilometers above Earth, the Tiantong-1 satellite primarily covers China and its surrounding areas. In contrast, the iPhone 14, collaborating with the Global Star Satellite System, offers a truly global communication experience with a worldwide satellite network. Moreover, unlike the Mate 60, which requires users to manually align with the satellite, the iPhone 14 can automatically connect to satellite passing overhead, such as Starlink, Currently, the satellite phone feature connecting to Tiantong-1 is exclusively available to China telecom users. The Mate 60 case once again confirms the ongoing struggle with Western export control measures in the battle against the Chinese Communist Party's technology theft. The disappearance of South Korean SK Hinks products numbers on the Mate 60, coupled with the covert operations regarding its 5G signal, exposes significant lapse in the existing control measures. In the semiconductor arena, heterogeneous integration and advanced packaging technology are akin to the crown jewels of the West. The Chinese Communist Party is attempting to break through this critical bottleneck by taking alternative routes. Fortunately, the U.S. Department of Commerce has already discerned their intentions, planning to establish a national semiconductor technology center focused on thwarting attempts at technological theft by the CCP. However, the CCP hasn't halted its advances. Europe, a continent boasting world-class semiconductor technology, has now established deep ties with China, with some countries and corporations unhesitantly supplying advanced technology to the CCP. Even more concerning is the CCP's large-scale poaching tactics in South Korea and Taiwan, revealing its very curiously appetite for global technology and talent. Meanwhile, Chinese tech giants Huawei and Alibaba are fully committed to research and development of Qualcomm computing. Although they are not relying on the latest manufacturing processes and hardware, it is undoubtedly a strategy to evade in the scrutiny of the West, shifting the real competition to software algorithms and other cutting-edge technology sectors. This move necessitates that the United States consider further restrictive measures for security reasons. Looking at the development of AI, high-performance GPUs are vital. Despite the US blocking the export of advanced chips like NVIDIA's H100 to China and the CCP can easily bypass these sanctions by utilizing shell companies in regions like the Middle East. Given the CCP's capital and influence in the Middle East, Africa, Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia, setting up such companies is just a small step towards achieving their goals. Current restrictions are only the tip of the iceberg for Huawei. If a comprehensive ban is indeed implemented, there will be a sharp decline in chip production. The Chinese Communist Party may also incur higher costs in falsifying data. However, the measures at this stage clearly fall short of fully restraining the CCP. This journey has relayed a clear message. In the battle against the CCP's technology theft, the West needs to adopt stricter and more thorough export control strategies, leaving no opportunity for the CCP to exploit. Continued sanctions. Taiwan technology expert and MyET CEO Ling Yijing clearly stated that the demise of the Soviet Union at the end of the last century was not the result of military defeat, but stemmed from its weakness both economically and technologically. The communist ideology steadfastly believes in reliance on government guidance and leadership for technological innovation. 
History, however, has proven that true technological advancements and breakthroughs come from the free market and genuine competitive environments, which is why the US and Europe have been able to nurture globally leading innovation hubs like Silicon Valley. In contrast, modern China is traversing a past diametrically opposed to the free market. They rely on government leadership, massive subsidies and plagiarism, attempting to catch up within a short span. This strategy not only undermines the core principles of a free economy, but has also led the United States to begin questioning whether China is trying to surpass or even surpass the US through substantial government subsidies and plagiarism. Ling Yijing warned that the decoupling between China and the US seems to be accelerating, with the tensions between the two major nations reverting to a Cold War era standoff scenario. In the free world, business operates with an open mindset, upholding integrity and willing to pay for technology. However, China continually seeks to acquire others' technology through shortcuts. When they need to purchase a particular type of machine they might buy in excessive quantities, then dismantle a portion to study and replicate its internal workings. Often, they end up with a superficial understanding of complex technologies unable to truly match the level of the original prototypes. In dealings involving the importation of technology or materials from abroad, there is a strong disregard for the intellectual property of others. It seems as if they expect everyone to unconditionally share their proprietary technology without any compensation or authorization. This mindset might be attributed to the authoritative regime of the Chinese Communist Party, often demanding rapid achievements of certain objectives, even if it means bypassing regular channels. Their decision-making appears to lack a thoughtful consideration. For instance, when a prominent semiconductor company in the US marketed its product to TSMC, it took two years for TMSC to meticulously evaluate and test them. In contrast, some companies in China hastily make substantial purchases within a month. Without a thorough assessment, this impulsive, half-baked approach to decision-making places them at a disadvantage in global competition, leading to numerous projects being abandoned midway. Since the Trump era, China has been continually challenging the rules of the international free market, ignoring intellectual property rights and relying on state subsidy as a core strategy. If this disregard for the intellectual property rights of other persist, opting for a path of theft, the global market will only respond to China through litigation. When there is an unrestrained reliance on subsidies, the international community will only counter these by imposing increased tariffs. In the long run, China may find it impossible to secure a position in the global semiconductor market, being confined to the domestic market instead. To illustrate, during the dismantling process of Huawei's chips, industry experts found evidence of intellectual property infringement. As long as this chip exists, this Huawei smartphone model stands little chance of being smoothly exported out of the country. Venturing abroad might be immediately exposed it to severe legal risks. Mm-hmm.